thanks so much for tuning into my channel. My name is Rabbit, and I use they them pronouns and I'm really uh, just popping in for a quick second here before I go to work because I wanted to show you guys this doll uh, that I created for my friend and co-worker at the cat cafe Aiko. I'm just gonna really quick talk about the details um, in her look and then if you want to keep watching the video I'll explain all about how I actually like made her and stuff. So basically my coworker knew that I made dolls and knew that I like to make like kind of pastel like cutesy looking ones um, so they asked if I could make one for them um, and they covered the cost of the materials and stuff and they gave me a lot of creative liberty they just said they wanted um, them to have white hair and be on a pink body um, so, used a, so I used a reboot Draculaura head like a basic one um, on the create a monster cat girl body so she has like the tail and the clip on ears and stuff as well as like the little rock on hand which I think is adorable. Basically I made her because my friend who was a musician wanted to have different like local handmade things, products showcased around her while they perform so they're able to like kind of like showcase um, some of their friends work and stuff so um, they asked if I it could make them a doll for that and I was like absolutely. Um, so she's a cat girl and she's really cute and pastel. She has all these beads in her hair but I also handmade all these little hair clips. Um, so we have like a little coffee cup because me and Aiko work together um, at a cafe. Um, there's a ball of yarn, a little pink kitty, and a green kitty, little hearts, little clay fish, these little paw print kind of um, pins, or hair clips, whatever, and then this little paw print letter. I think that's most of what's uh, her hair clips. Aiko uses she and they pronouns, um, so that's why I'm kind of going back and forth between the two. Uh, she has a little collar with a bell on it, and then she also has a little bell on her tail. Um, I wanted to make it like mint green and pink because I think that color combination is really pretty. So the dress is like pink velvet at the top and then pink satin at the bottom with um, a really lacy petticoat and then bloomers underneath. Um, these little mint socks and also the feet have like toe beans, like cat beans on the bottom of them. Uh, the apron has like a little cat uh, face pocket on it um, and little buttons and lots of little like bows are on the outfit. I also gave her little wrist cuffs. The back of the dress laces up. It has these, um, what are those things called? Grommets? grommets and stuff um, in the back and like green ribbon and the hair is really pearly and filled with all these like really cutesy kitschy like plasticky beads. Yeah I think that it's a super cute doll. I really hope Iko likes her. Oh yeah and then um, this was my first time trying a new thing with the hair where I actually like braided the back kind of together to like um, hide the the lines the the holes where I poked the hair in you know. Um, either way I'm really excited to show Aiko. I hope they really like her. I think they will. Um, it's gonna be a surprise. Yeah, I'm off to work soon <laughs> to drop her off and I'm really looking forward to it. So if you wanna see um, how I made this doll, all about the making of from beginning to end, just keep watching. Thank you for bearing with my very long intro and um, let's get on to it. All right, so we're starting by taking the two dolls we're gonna use and I'm just gonna cut the reboot Draculaura's hair really short so I can unroot her and then reroute her because the cat girl's head is made for a wig so it doesn't have holes to reroute. Then I'm putting them both in a mug and putting really hot water into them and letting it sit for five minutes until I can remove the heads once the plastic is soft enough. The cat girl's head pops off really easily but obviously the neck peg in the reboot Dracula makes it a little tougher. Just soak her for a little longer and then I take a pair of old tweezers and use the back end of them to scrape out all the hair plugs that I guess are left inside the head. And then I use a combination of tweezers and pliers um, to remove all the gluey little hair bits that are stuck in there. And then once it's empty, it's time to remove the factory paint. So I'm just taking some 100% acetone on a cotton ball and making sure I let it sit for a little and then rub off the paint. Um, for all the little corners and tiny details, I just use a Q-tip to help me get in there. This is always a really satisfying part of the doll process for me, just like how well acetone melts stuff off. I don't know, it's wild. Alrighty, <laughs> next we just wanna wash it 
with some dish soap and some warm water. Uh, this is just to make sure that all the acetone is off it and it doesn't eat away at your doll slowly over time. And let it dry and then it's time to make the hair. So I just take a bunch of different colors of pastel yarn and measure out the length that I want it and then double that length and start looping it up. Once I have enough of it, I cut all of the loops so that I have like longer strands of hair. <laughs> um, then I take each strand of yarn and unravel it. So I have all these little like curly bits of individual yarn and set those aside. And then when I'm ready, I can take my rerouting tool and use it to put the hair into the head holes that are already there. And this takes a while, but it's always pretty fun for me. You can always just like put on a show and listen to a podcast, whatever. And then when that's done, just put an elastic in it cover it with some plastic wrap um just saran is fine tuna's joining me of course she's an angel and then i um use some sewing pins to just um kind of pull back the plastic wrap so um, when i spray it i can get all the way up into it and then i go and spray it with mr super clear and let it dry then it's time to do the face up so i go in with derwent watercolor pencils and i always start usually by outlining the eyes when you do it with the pencil dry it's really a subtle color and then when i am happy with kind of the rough outline of the shape i can add water to it to activate it and that'll make it darker so i'm using my paintbrush to just add a little bit of water so that when i draw on it it will be much more concentrated Sorry that my hair is in the way, I need to get better at filming setups. Either way, I just trace um, the outline that I want for the eyes and use like a slightly damp paintbrush to just clean up any rough edges as I go along. Then I kind of map out the brows by using the nose and the eyes as a guide. I'll put a little picture so you can see what I mean. Um, and then I connect those lines in like kind of a connect the dot way and they look really kind of like sad brows but when I fill them in and make them really bushy I promise it won't look so um so sad. Aiko has pretty bushy brows so I wanted to really retain that as part of the character. I'm using like a nice um dark brown pencil in it. It looks black but it's dark brown. And then when I want to just um, clean it up, I'll just use a little bit of a Q-tip or, or a damp paintbrush to clean it up. Then I just keep adding details to the eyes. I'm adding an eyelid right now, and I start by just tracing it really, really gently with a dry pencil. And when I'm happy with it, I can activate that watercolor pencil and then also use a teeny tiny paintbrush to kind of darken the line. I'm using kind of a light brown to make the eye crease, just using a damp paintbrush to smudge it out. Then I decided I wanted like a little cat eyeliner wing because it's a cat girl and I always wear cat eyeliner and I think it's a cute look. So I keep using the brush to smooth it out. Then I add the nostrils just using a little bit of black. Then it's time for the lipstick, and I just wanted a really subtle, like, rosy pink color. So I'm using, I think it's a Prismacolor watercolor pencil. And I wanted the top lip to be a little bit darker than the bottom lip. Then it's time to draw in the irises, and I'm doing the outline in kind of a darkish brown, because Aiko has hazel eyes, and I think they're brown on the outside and then more green on the inside. So I'm making the outside darker, and then adding different shades of greens and browns on the inside to kind of give it dimension. And when I have enough colors, I just use my wet paintbrush to smudge them all together, kind of make like a nice combination of them. Then I use a white watercolor pencil to make the whites of the eyes more white. Then I'm going in and just making sure all my lines are smooth and everything's nice and crisp. And obviously between this, I'm spraying layers of Mr. Super Clear. Then I'm using my white pencil to add a little bit of highlight and I'm drawing in the irises with a black watercolor pencil. I like bigger irises because they make the characters look more cute. Then I'm using a teeny tiny Prismacolor pencil, just a pencil crayon, to add little white lines in the irises and then also in the lips. Uh, I just think this adds a little element of realism, which is nice. Then I use the same pencil that I used for the lip color and add a tiny bit of eyeshadow. And then I use some soft pastels and an eyeshadow brush to add a little bit of blush to her face. I like to put it on the cheeks, the nose, the chin, and the forehead, as well as the ears. I think it's just a lot of blush is like 
a really cute look in my opinion. And then I'm taking my dark brown pencil and adding a tiny bit of spots for freckles. Then I use um, a white acrylic paint to paint a tiny white heart into each um, iris or pupil, whatever the black part of the eye is. Um, and then also just little shine dots that aren't heart shaped but are just little dots. Then I take a red watercolor pencil to just add a little bit of red in the corners, inner and outer of the eye. So you know how eyes have that little darker thing? Yeah. Um, and then I take a black watercolor pencil and just outline the center of the lips to make it nice and defined and dark so it looks like her mouth's a little bit open almost. Then I use that teeny tiny white pencil um, to add a highlight under the eyes, above the eyes, on the nose, on the cupid's bow, on the eyebrows, on the cheekbone, basically anywhere that I'm going to put highlighter. I also make a couple of extra lines in the brows to make them look more defined. Then it's time for a little more eyeshadow because I decided I didn't put enough before. And the whites of the eyes weren't quite white enough so I ended up just going in with some acrylic paint to really make it pop, I guess. And once it's all sealed and done, I can go in with my gloss varnish and I do about three or four layers usually on both eyes and on the lips. So it kind of looks like they have lip gloss and like shiny alive eyes in my opinion. Then it's time for the body. So the cat girl body obviously has all these stripes on it, but they're a little too dark for this cat girl. So I'm just using some acetone and a Q-tip to remove them. You're going to want to be really careful when using acetone on the doll bodies because if you use too much of it or kind of use it excessively, it makes the plastic react kind of weird. So I try to just use as little as possible and then make sure you wash it super, super well with dish soap and like a little toothbrush when you're done and let it dry before you spray it again. But her body is all free of the stripes now. We wash it with dish soap, let it dry, and spray it with a matte finish. And now it's all beautiful and matte, so we take our pastels and a little eyeshadow brush and just add blush in any indents, any joints, any like tips of things. Like I like to add it to the tips of the ears, the tips of the fingers, the knuckles. Uh, the tail on both ends. I just think, like I said, blush is such a cute look. I, I think you can't have enough of it. And taking the body apart, you don't have to do that. It was like fun to do that with the Monster High Create a Monster, but it took much longer than it normally takes me to blush bodies. But I'm doing the knees and the toes and the heels. Repeat on the other leg and just clean it up with a Q-tip if it's too messy. Then I go in with the belly button and under the chest and uh, the collarbone, the arm holes on the back and the shoulder blades, as well as under the knees. I know that lots of times you can't see all the blush, but it's just easier to do the whole body um, so that whatever parts of the clothes do leave the body visible um, are, like you don't have to be like, oh no, I didn't blush her like belly and now her belly's showing and I forgot whatever all right and then spray it seal it and put it back together you can use Krylon matte spray on the body but definitely don't use it on the face um they're different materials so then it's time to sketch out a design for the outfit and I just usually do like a really rough design but I want like a little corset top and a poofy skirt a little apron bloomers I want to do socks I love stripy socks I think that's adorable and lots of bows on everything I wanted to do like off the shoulder straps because Iko said they thought that was cute and then I just label everything. Then I take a long piece of paper that's the length that I want the skirt to be and cut out it from a big piece of pink satin that was like a kid's skirt that I got at a thrift store and has been used in so many doll clothes. Trace the pattern and cut it out and then I measure the lace to be the same length and I want a bunch of layers of lace so I take white and pink one and then a sparkly white one and then like a really big white one. Then I want to hem the skirt, just pin it with pins and I wanted the edge of the skirt to have this lacy edge on it so I'm just sewing it on the inside so it'll show as like this kind of little lace frill and I'm just using a really simple stitch all the way down. I think it's called a whip stitch. I don't know. I never took professional sewing classes but it's just yeah that in and out kind of stitch. It works pretty well for these kinds of projects. And then tie it off and cut it. So that's the outer skirt. We have that. Very good. Then for the petticoat, we're taking the big white lace and the kind of white and pink lace, and we're just attaching the white and pink lace to the other one. So you just sew it the whole way through. And 
Originally I put the lace on top, but I ended up not liking that, so I ended up using it as a petticoat, but the original design was like this, but no, that's not what we ended up going with. So after sewing it the wrong way, I detach it and I'm ready to sew it again. So I'm just sewing um, the petticoat to the inner skirt, that way there'll be less wrinkles under the waistband and it'll be a little less bulky. So I'm just sewing them up together with a really, really loose stitch so I'm able to gather it as I go and kind of decide how big I want the skirt to be and how much it needs to be gathered. So I just keep testing it out on the doll to make sure it fits and it looks good. That's the skirt done. Next I'm making the top and just tracing like a kind of curved um, rectangle onto a little piece of pink velvet that I have, cutting it out with my scissors. It doesn't have to be super precise because I'm um, kind of measuring it on the doll as well and pinning it there. So I decide to hem both sides just need a couple of stitches because it's such a small amount of fabric honestly and repeat on the other side and then once it's hemmed it looks like it's a good length for a corset there's a good amount of space in the back and I'm just marking it on both sides to be even so I can put some grommets in then I take like a big needle and poke holes into the spots that I marked and put the top half of a grommet into the top and the bottom half of a grommet into the bottom. I wish I could find littler ones for these kinds of projects because they're honestly way too big for, for doll clothes, but I still really like the look of like a little doll corset and it works for now. Once they're in, I use my little tool and just hammer it, hammer the other one, and look! It's so cute and professional looking. Wow, who would have thunk? Do that on the other side till we have all four grommets in. Then we have the top and the skirt, so it's time to attach. Just line them up good side to good side and sew them together and then I'm taking both edges of the skirt and hemming them so that when I sew them together the top that can't be sewn together because the doll's bum is too big won't be like sticking out so I turn the dress inside out you can see how pretty the inside petticoat is honestly I freaking love the look of it and I'm sewing the two hems of the skirts together to close the dress and I didn't want to sew up the whole way so definitely leave a gap and make sure it fits before you commit to it, but it does fit, looks good. So then it's time to put the ribbons for the corset in, and that'll kind of seal up the dress on its own. So I'm taking this really pretty mint green ribbon that I got at the thrift store, and just threading it through all the grommets, and tighten it, and then I just tie it in a bow at the back, cut it off at like a nice little angle, and then on the top of the dress I'm attaching a ribbon to be kind of like a shoulder piece. I'm using hot glue gun, and this will be so it matches the corset lacing. Basically I'm just making like little off the shoulder kind of piece and gluing it in the back together. It's very simple, it's just like a piece of ribbon wrapped around and hot glued together, but I think it works. Then it's time to make the apron, so I'm taking kind of a half circle shape of paper and tracing it onto a old white button down shirt that I had, cutting it out, and then you want to cut two slits in the corners of it, that way you can get kind of the rounder edges. And then I just want to hem all the sides, so I pin them in place and hem them, but because they're kind of pointy, I decided to use um, that really pretty pink and green ribbon with the flowers on it. Um, to kind of hide the rectangular and square parts of the apron. So I'm just sewing it together with a really loose stitch so I can gather it and measuring it so it will fit on my ribbon and just keeping going stitching and gathering until I have enough gathered lace to fit on my little apron. Then cutting it off and sewing it on. And I wasn't sure if to sew it on the inside or the outside and I think I ended up going with the outside, yeah. And I, I think it looks cute but Mm, maybe next time I'll try the inside and see if it looks better. I just don't want it to look all square and jaggedy, you know? Anyway, so I'm just going ahead and attaching all the frilly ribbon around the edges of the apron. And then when I have it and I like the shape, I decide to hem the top of it to make it just a little bit shorter. And I'm using a really loose stitch so I can gather it again. And it's really fast to sew that way. So once we have a little shape that we like, we secure it at that length tie it off, and then I attach like a little lacy piece of ribbon to be the waistband of it with a hot glue gun. Um, sometimes I use fabric glue, but stuff like this is just easier and faster to use a hot glue gun. Once I'm happy with it, I put it on the doll and just tie it in a little bow on the back. And I honestly love how the bows look with her little cute tail on the back. All right, then it's time to make her bloomer. So I take that same piece of um, old shirt 
and just trace like kind of a really loose pants pattern on it and you want to make them super big so they're able to be poofy but I fold the shirt in half and trace it and then once we have our two pieces of bloomers you want to cut them into four so just cut up like the crotch line I guess you would say so then you have four little pieces of bloomer then it's time to sew it together and you always want to make sure you're sewing good side to good side not that it really matters because the fabric look looks the same but I did have pen on part of it so sewing up the legs then once we have it um, do the same thing with the other leg of the bloomers and then you can add a little frill I'm taking um, some pins to hem up the top of it and just pinning it in place and cutting a little piece of lace long enough to be the hem of the bloomer and then I just sew it in place with a little loose whip stitch and repeat on the other one so these bloomers have a cute little lacy detail and then it's time to sew the butt together or no we're sewing the the front butt together okay and then we hem the top of it and make sure you leave enough room if you're following along to put a ribbon in it because you need a waistband because uh, these pants are gonna be huge on a doll so you need to have that like ribbon waistband to make sure that they are poofy in the right places but they're not like falling down and just tie it off make sure you're not like gathering it or anything at this point and once that's done you can sew the legs together to each other and of course you're still doing this good side to good side all of this is being sewn inside out as in we will turn it the other way out and sew the other leg together once the legs are sewn together we can sew the actual butt together and make sure you don't sew up the part that you left for the waistband of course and once we have that i just take um, a tiny safety pin and my ribbon for the waistband and use the safety pin to feed the ribbon through once it's all the way through can take the pin off and then turn it inside out. Tweezers really help with this since um, these little bloomers are so small. And then put them on the doll, make sure they fit. And it seems like a good fit. We just need to tie the waistband in place and it just gathers it really nicely in my opinion. Tie it in a little bow, make sure the bow looks nice and even and then just trim at desired length. Then I'm just taking this really peachy orangey ribbon and tying it at the legs of the bloomers in a little bow to have like a little extra little detail there. And then cut the bow at the desired length. I'm trying to make this one a little smaller and it's always a little hard for me with my fingers, but it's all good. And repeat on the other side. So we have cute little bloomers with matchy frilly ruffles with the petticoat and it's all adorable. Then I'm taking a little pair of mint green like kids pants, thrifted whatever, and pinning them in half and then using a sock pattern that's just like tracing a monster high foot into sock length to draw two patterns onto the folded in half pants. Then I take out the pins and just line them up um, so I can trim any excess so they'll be a little more even. Then I am just cutting a length of lace for the hem and hemming the top of it and then sewing the lace into it as well while I'm like sewing the hem down two birds one stone and the lace is very like pastel pink with like the mint green I think it's such a pretty color combination doing it on both sides and trimming the lace to fit and then putting the sock inside out and sewing it together generally when I sew socks I sew all the way up and then all the way down again to make sure that it's really secure until you have both and then I turn them inside out tweezers are a must-have here like it's so hard to turn little doll socks inside out if you don't have tweezers and once they are like that, it's time to try them on and they fit, so we're happy and all is well. Then I'm taking a little extra piece of ribbon that I had and these little bells from an old bracelet that doesn't fit me anymore. I'm using a tiny jump ring on the bell and then using a needle and thread to attach that to the ribbon. I'm making her like a little cat collar choker with a bell because I think that's adorable, like cat girls with chokers, you know. It's cute, whatever. And then to apply it, I just kind of put it around her neck and use a little piece of hot glue to secure it and pinch it in place. Sorry, my camera was kind of out of the way for that one. And then um, I wanna trace some little patches for her. So I'm tracing a little cat face and cutting it out onto just like some pink felt from the dollar store, making sure to trim it so it's a small size. Then I'm just using a regular pen to draw some whiskers and a little nose for the kitty. And then tracing a heart onto the felt to cut out. And I wanna make two of those cause I wanna put the hearts on the knees as little patches. The kitty is for the apron. 
And then I'm um, taking some scraps of felt and cutting out two big circles and then a bunch of little tiny circles because I'm trying to make little toe beans for the socks. It's really hard to cut little circles on like very, very small piece of fabric, but I did my best and <laughs> it kind of worked. Anyway, once I'm happy with all of my shapes, I plug in my hot glue gun and I start with the knees. I position them where I would like them to make sure, and then just use a little tiny dot of hot glue to put the patches on the knees. Don't want to use too much because otherwise the pen bleeds through. You can kind of see that I did um, use too much. Uh, then attaching it to the little kitty pocket to the apron, and then the little toe beans to the socks. Tweezers were very helpful here. Um, I think I only ended up fitting like three beans on the toes instead of the four that I cut out but it made more sense and it was cute. So yeah. Then I'm just making some little tiny bows for extra decoration on the apron. I'm just making them out of this really cute white thrifted satiny ribbon that I found at the thrift store. So I have two smaller ones that are going on the edges of the apron and one slightly bigger one that's a bit more pink and it's going um, on the front of the apron. And I just use a dot of hot glue to get my little bows on the sides and attach that. Then another little dot of hot glue to get my bow in the center. And I just think it adds such cute little detail. Then I wanted to add more bows to the skirt, so I made a bunch of those and just decided to attach it around the kind of lacy, fluffy part, and then a little one for the top of the dress. Then I'm taking some little pearls from the dollar store and attaching them on both sides of the bow. And then I'm taking some teeny tiny white buttons and attaching them to the waistband of the apron. Um, and then I'm taking that white satiny ribbon, attaching another one of those little teeny bells from that bracelet that doesn't fit me anymore, and tying it in a little bow onto the tail. If I was a cat person, I would totally wear a little bow on my tail. That would be so freaking cute, dude. Then it's time to paint the nails. And I wanted really mint green, adorable nails. And I didn't have mint green, so I decided to mix some colors until I got a nice mint green that I wanted and I take a really tiny paintbrush and just do a little dot of color on each fingernail and I usually do toenails as well but I just didn't in this one it's okay it's fine whatever and this was my first time actually glossing the nails um, with a couple layers of gloss varnish after I was done and I just thought it added so much cuteness then I wanted to make little wrist cuffs for my cat girl because sometimes I see cat girl costumes that have wrist cuffs and I think it's really cute so I take off her arms and just make these little bows and then I'm using that really pale minty ribbon to just wrap around her arm and secure with hot glue. I cut it and then add a little bit of pink ribbon as kind of an accent detail in the center and then glue that in place. And then to hide the spot where um, the ribbons attach to themselves, that's where I'm putting the little bow. So a little bit of hot glue, then I attach the arms back onto the hands and the arms back onto the body. And then for an extra little bit of something, I just decided to put a little tiny pearl in the center of each bow, because I thought that would be precious. Then it's time to take the pins out of our doll's head and take her hair out of its glad wrap. Um, I fluff out her hair and then separate out kind of the front portion for her bangs and the kind of little pieces that hang out in front of her head. I put those pieces in um, little alligator clips or whatever you call these um, and then put her bangs in the front so I can cut them. And I always cut them a little longer than I need them to be so I can trim them shorter. You never want to do the other way around obviously because you can always fix them if they're too long but when they're too short uh, it's kind of a mess. Then I separate out her hair into two kind of pigtail things and the rooting is kind of visible on it, so I decided to kind of do a almost a braidy looking thing going up the, the hair. I'm really bad at hair. I like don't have any experience with it. I've never really been a hair person. Um, so forgive me if this is a, a bad way to do it, but um, we're trying our best here. So just uh, kind of do it a little crisscross applesauce. And once I'm happy with it, I use some clear elastics to just put those pigtails in place and make sure they're secure. Uh, once they're in, I just take out different chunks of the pigtails and braid in a bunch of little braids. I think I did like seven on both sides and this is so I can sew a bunch of like beads and stuff 
into them. So once I ha am happy with the amount of braids that I have, um, I take a needle and thread and a bunch of just like really kitschy plastic shiny beads of like hearts and uh, fake pearls and stars and stuff. Um, I just use those to add decoration to all the braids. And once all the braids have been beaded and I'm happy with that, it's time to put her cat ears in. So they're on like little clips because they're the ones that came with the Create a Monster kit. So they stick out quite a bit, but I think I hid them pretty well. And then it's time to put the head on and it works pretty well because it's the Create a Monster cat girl head, which is made to come off. So thank God for that. And then it's time to make her hair clips. And I guess they're not really clips. They're just like little clay hair pieces. To start, I'm making little paw prints by rolling out a little circle and using my little dotting tool to make the little paw print shape. Then I make some little hearts uh, by just kind of squeezing and using my pointy tool to make the insert. Made a little um, fishies by making like a half moon tail and kind of a teardrop shape and adding a little bit of texture with different tools and making a little face for it. I also made a little cat head and used my dotting tool to give it a little expression and little whiskers, which you'll be able to see better once it's painted um, and stuff. And again, I'm so sorry for my hair in the way. I like need to get better headbands, I don't know. I also make some little hearts and different colors of those little paw print guys. I also decided to make a little paw print guy in a heart, so combo two in one. Then I wanted some mint green, but I didn't have any mint green, so I just mixed some white and some green until I got a color that I liked, and used that to make a couple more little fish with the half moon shape and the teardrop, and I used my dotting tool to kind of give it scales. I think this was my favorite um, way to give the fish scales. And then a little smiley face, kind of like a goldfish cracker. I think they're cute. Another little paw print. Then I wanted to make a ball of yarn, so I'm doing like a long worm, snake, whatever, and then twisting it into a little ball, and then using parts of it to kind of roll over itself in kind of like a crisscross pattern. Like two strands in a crisscross. And then I wanted to make like a little curly bit, because you know, I mean, cats shouldn't play with balls of yarn, but like cartoon cats and yarn, very, very cute. So I make a little curly thing and then another fish i was like kind of running low on inspiration of cat girl things i got like cat faces fish paw prints if you have more ideas please 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 tell me because i want to make more cat girls or cat people and tools are really handy for this stuff but you can just use toothpicks and stuff if you don't have tools um, and then Iko and I work at a coffee shop together, so I decided to make a little coffee cup hair piece. So I just used like white clay and then a little snake to make the handle, a little snake to make the saucer. And then I mixed some white and brown together and kind of swirled it to make like a coffee looking thing inside of it. And then I put a little heart decoration in the middle, which you'll be able to see better when it's painted in. And then I really like these like letter mail hair clips that I've been making, but with a heart in the center it didn't really make sense, so I made it with a paw print in the center instead, and I thought that was like a really cute way to translate it, so I was really happy with that. But I'm just using um, tiny little pieces of pink clay um, to make the, the big paw print and then the little toe beans. And using a dotting tool is indispensable to pick them up and not like crush them because they're so, so freaking little. And that's what they look like before they get baked. So I'm just going in beforehand with my soft pastels and a little bit of a paintbrush to just add a little bit of red to all my pink ones and add a little bit of green to all my darker green ones. I'm gonna paint them more but I just wanted to add a little dimension before baking. So there they are baked and then I'm using just some acrylic paint to add some extra little details to things. Or not necessarily details but just trying to like enhance the colors making the the paw prints contrast like white on pink or white on green so you can see the paw more. Sorry if you can hear my cat sighing in the background. <laughs> she has a very hard life. <laughs> and then the paw print heart just adding those little white details. And same with the letter mail because sometimes uh, clay will get these little like fibers and stuff in it and just cleaning it up with some paint will kind of cover those up and make the coffee cup a little more stark white. I also think I used translucent clay instead of white clay, which is why the white doesn't look very stark white. Then I'm also adding some little hearts inside the heart with little bits of um, white acrylic paint and my tiny paintbrush and adding some extra details to the fish, stripes in their tail fin, 
and also stripes on one of their bodies, on the pink one. And then I also decided to add whiskers to the coffee cup and some little um, markings on my cat faces. So that's what all the little hair bits look like. I also ended up, when I had my acrylic paint out, painting on a little white heart nose, and then I decided to gloss it because you know how cats have like glossy noses? So that's what that is. And then I'm just using a hair curler to make sure the bangs lie a little bit more flat um, so that the hairpins can go in more easily. And then I trim them to make sure that you can see the eyes well enough. And then I'm using just a dot of hot glue to attach to secure all my little hair pieces. And I kind of attach them sporadically, but trying to make sure that they're sort of even on both sides and keep trimming the bangs. And just adding things as I go along. I can't wait to make more cat girls. I think this is like a new, a new fad. Like y'all are gonna see a lot more cat girls <laughs> in the future. Sorry if you don't like cat people, but I think they're amazing. All right, so her hair looks good in my opinion. And the only thing that's left is some little bows for those elastics, cause I don't like just the clear elastic showing. So I just make two little green satin bows and use a little bit of hot glue to put them both in place. And then I use some mica powder. I'm using like a pearlescent white pinkish blue one as well as a silver one. And I'm putting the highlighter on her nose, on her forehead, um, on her cupid's bow, on her cheeks. And then I'm using some fake lashes and my tweezers. I'm just kind of curving them here so they stay in a better shape. Cutting them to size, cutting off a little extra piece for below, and then using some lash glue and a Q-tip. I'm just running the Q-tip with the lash glue along her lash line. And then you wanna let it sit for like 30 seconds or a minute before you apply the lashes. But when you do apply the lashes, I just use my tweezers and place them on and hold them in place if need be, but generally they kind of stay, especially if you've waited long enough. And I trim them a smidge because they're just like a little bit long. And then I put a little bit of lash glue on both bottom lashes and use my tweezers to put in those extra little pieces of lashes. So she has that like really cute bottom lash look. And then I'm taking a little bit of Mod Podge and with a toothpick adding a dot of glue so I can put little pearls on her face. And that's her. So thank you so much for watching. If you stuck with me to the end of the video, that means so, so much to me. Thank you very, very much. Um, I really hope you enjoyed. Um, maybe learned a little something new or something. I don't know. Um, or just, it was fun and relaxing. I hope that for you. Um, that was my goal. Anyway, um, I really appreciate you spending your time with me and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, if you enjoyed, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, whatever, etc., etc. I appreciate that. Um, me and Ico Doll wish you a goodbye. And yeah, I, I'm really excited to, to give them to Ico. I think they really like them, I hope. But We'll see. Wish me luck and um, see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.